This is the eighth video in our series, looking at how to configure and set up a Synology NAS running Distation Manager 7. So far, we've connected our NAS to our wireless router, installed Distation Manager, and initialized our hard drives so that we can start to store data on them. However, before we do anything else, we need to assign our NAS with a static IP address. Like any device that connects to our home network, our NAS will need to use something called an IP address. In very simplistic terms, an IP address is a series of numbers that will allow a device on our network to communicate with other devices. So you can think of an IP address a little like the computer equivalent of a telephone number. This means that just like a telephone number, the beginning of an IP address is used to work out which network a device is connected to while the number at the end of an IP address is used to identify where a specific device is on our network. In the past, when a device was connected or disconnected from a network, someone would have had to manually give that device an IP address for it to use. However, as manually assigning IP addresses can be time consuming, and it's easy to make a mistake which could prevent a device from connecting to our network, to make assigning and managing IP addresses easier, built into our router is something called DHCP. Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol is simply a service that will manage a pool of IP addresses so that when a device is connected to our home network, DHCP will automatically give that device an IP address from its address pool. DHCP will then keep track of which addresses have been assigned to which devices to help ensure that there's no address conflicts and that when a device is removed from our network, the IP address that it was using is returned to the DHCP address pool. The type of IP addresses used by DHCP are referred to as dynamic IP addresses. This is because a dynamic IP address is only temporarily issued to a device while it is connected to our home network. However, while DHCP makes connecting and disconnecting from a network seamless, Due to the way dynamic IP addresses work, if a device on our home network goes offline or our router restarts, there's no guarantee that that device will receive the same IP address that it previously used. While this will not be a problem for most of the devices connected to our home network, as our NAS needs to always be contactable from the same address, having our NAS use a dynamic IP address could become an issue. So to get around this, we need to use something called a static IP address. As the name suggests, a static IP address is an address that is assigned to a device for it to permanently use. In other words, the IP address of our NAS will never change regardless of whether our router's DHCP server or our NAS has been restarted. However, while there are two methods for assigning a static IP address to a device on a home network, in this video, we're going to demonstrate the method that we consider to be best practice. Within a typical home network, your DHCP server is usually built into your wireless router. However, as not all wireless routers are configured in the same way, before we can assign a static IP address to our NAS, we need to check our DHCP server settings. For this demonstration, we will be using a Google Nest Wi-Fi router as its simplified user interface should make it easier for you to see which DHCP settings you need to change and then apply those changes to your own model of router. First, we need to navigate to our router's local area network DHCP settings. It is usually from here that you will find basic information regarding the IP address that your router is using and its DHCP address pool. On most routers, you will find that your DHCP address pool is using addresses that either start with 192.168 or 10.0. However, this is not the part of the address that we're interested in. Instead, we are interested in the second half of the address. What we're looking to do is exclude a series of IP addresses either from the beginning or the end of the DHCP address pool. This is to ensure that DHCP does not try and assign those addresses to devices connected to our home network. As we like to exclude addresses at the beginning of our DHCP address pool, we prefer to exclude the first 19 IP addresses. As you can see, 
on a Google Nest Wi-Fi router, by default, its DHCP address pool has already been configured to work in this way, which means that we can assign up to 18 devices with static IP addresses. The reason we only have 18 and not 19 addresses is that our wireless router is already using one of our static IP addresses. You may have also noticed that a Google Nest Wi-Fi router does not use the same address that is typically used by most models of wireless router. This seems to be because Google consider it best practice not to use IP ranges starting with 192.168.0 or 192.168.1. So if you're using a different model of wireless router, while you could just copy the DHCP address pool settings that we are using, it's not necessary that you do. So for example, if you're using a router that has a DHCP address pool that starts with 192.168.1, you can simply change the last digits at the start of the address to 192.168.1.20. After saving the changes you've made to your router's DHCP address pool, it might be a good idea to reboot any devices connected to your home network. This is simply to ensure that those devices are using up-to-date IP addresses. However, as we are using a Google Nest Wi-Fi router, there's no need to make any changes to our DHCP address pool. So let's take a look at how we give our NAS a static IP address. If you rebooted your Synology NAS along with the other devices on your network, you might find that your NAS is no longer using the same IP address. If this is the case, from your web browser, if you use find.synology.com, you should be able to reconnect to the station manager. Let's sign into our NAS using our administrator's credentials. From the DSM desktop, if we select Control Panel, and under the connectivity heading choose Network, by selecting the tab Network Interface, we can see that our NAS is connected via LAN 1 and is currently using DHCP. For anyone new to networking, LAN simply means local area network and usually refers to your home network. You may also hear people make reference to WAN or wide area network, which typically refers to the internet or multiple LANs connected to each other over distance. If we highlight LAN 1 and choose the Edit button, we will be presented with two options. Get network configuration automatically, DHCP, and use manual configuration. By selecting use manual configuration, we will force our NAS to always use the address in the IP address field. We now need to adjust the IP address our NAS is using by editing its last three digits. It is our opinion that it's best practice to keep devices with static IP addresses in sequence. Not only should this make it easier to keep track of which static IP addresses you've used, it should also make it easier to remember which devices have been assigned with which static IP address. For example, as our router is using 192.168.86.1, we are going to assign our NAS with the static IP address of 192.168.86.2. Then, if in the future, we need to add a network printer, as that printer will also need to use a static IP address, we would assign it with an IP address of 192.168.86.3. However, if your router is configured to use a different IP address, for example 192.168.1.1, you will need to give your NAS a static IP address of 192.168.1.2 and your network printer an IP address of 192.168.1.3. Let's edit the IP address of our NAS and select OK to apply our new network settings. You can see that in our browser, the station manager automatically switches to its new static IP address, which means that our NAS will now always be contactable from the same IP address regardless of whether our NAS or our router has been rebooted. To summarize, 
In this video, we took a look at one way that you can configure your router so that it will exclude a series of IP addresses from its DHCP address pool. We then took a look at where you need to go in Distation Manager in order to give your NAS a static IP address. In the next video in this series, we're going to start to configure our new NAS by taking a look at something called File Services.